Good morning. Today we're continuing on with the development of our data structure project. As you can see right here, we have our lovely UML diagram that describes how we're going to be actually putting this together. We looked at last time the idea of using a node of type, and that node of type is the idea that we're having a, a, something that can hold different things. We're now going to look at how we can actually build that up into an array of type. And so to look at that, let's look over here in the brighter blue section. As you can see, as a comparison to the green over here, we have again a front and a size as data members, they're both private. Instead of being an int node, however, it's a node of type that makes it up. So we have again that composition relationship right here, one to n, and then size is still just an int. As you can see over here in the constructors and methods section, we have a little bit more on this. We have a, a default constructor we're gonna be using just for compilation purposes, a default object that can be created. We're not gonna be using this, but we wanna make sure it's there as an option. We also have an array of type int size, and so they have that we can actually create the array of that integer. And we have our get size method as well as our get from index and set it index methods. And so as you can see, it's very similar to what we had with the int node array, just a little bit different because we're making a little bit more information that can be attached to this. And we're gonna go ahead and look over here in our lovely grouping right here. In my model section, I have that now specified. I have my node.hpp we looked at last time. We're gonna switch over here to the array.hpp. Click over on that. Right now, we, as you can see, we have our class definition section of the header file. Again, remember that when we're doing templated classes inside C++, we actually have to put everything together in one single file. And so we just have our template section right here for the header. We're gonna start off our class right here with the include statements that we are needed to actually use this class. As we're doing with all of our data structures, we're gonna be using the assert command to make sure that our information that we are uh, preconditions we're using are correct. We also have to pound include the node header file, the one that actually makes up the array object. We have our template class type prefix we're gonna be using for everything here on line 15. Then we have our class definition going from 16 to 27. Again, with all C++ classes, we end with our great friend, the semicolon. In our private section, we have our standard approach of our node of type pointer called front, as well as the int size. That size is gonna be how big our array is. We also have our default constructor, an array of type, an array of type int size. Again, we have our get size method and our get from index and our set index methods. Let's go ahead and close out that side window and we take a look at this a little bit closer so we can see the full thing. Looking at the implementation section, we have our two constructors right here. As you can see, we have our array of type using the default constructor. We're only implementing this so our code will compile properly because anytime that we have a um, specification of something as a data member in some other class, it's gonna automatically look at the default constructor. And so we have that right here. As you can see, I have a lovely comment of do not use and a comment saying this is only for compilation purposes. Notice also that there's no assert statement being in here. And the fact that we have no size or anything on that is simply we're using this only to actually make sure that we have compilation of our code. So we're just gonna have that right there as we can use that. Let's go look at the more um, correct constructor. The correct constructor, again, we start with the array of type as the um, prefix to our scope resolution operator then our array constructor, followed by the parameter we're using for this in the case of size. Again, we start off this with an assert size is greater than zero, making sure we can only create an array that's the right size. We then set that size parameter to be the size data member, standard approach right there. Just like we did in our int node array, we're gonna set front to be a new node of type, calling the default constructor of the op node operator because we don't know what's inside it, nor do we know where it's pointing to. We then use a for loop starting off at one, going up to less than size because we want to connect all those nodes together in the right sequence. And inside that for loop, we're going to say node of type pointer current node is a new node of type with no information because again, we don't know where it's going. And we set that current node, set its pointer to front. So we have that information right there so we can connect those lovely nodes together in sequence, just going together each time we go as we build that up. Looking at the templated class type methods, we have our get from index and our set index methods. As you can see, just like we saw in the int node array, we start off the assert statement again. We have an index parameter we have to make sure that is less than or equal to, excuse me, greater than or equal to zero, and their index is also less than size. We then, on the array type, we have say type value. Notice that I do not explicitly initialize a value on this because I don't know what kind of thing I'm passing to this. And because I do not know what kind of thing I'm gonna be using, I don't wanna to attempt to solve or initialize that to anything right there. I then say my node of type pointer front and so I set current equal to front because I just want to get a pointer to the beginning of my array. And then we use the for loop approach where we start off at zero, which is where I'm at, all the way up to less than index. And we go from current to the next pointer all the way down through, moving my current pointer to be the next pointer until I get to the right value. Once I reach that correct position, I'm going to say that value is equal to current get node data. Using that get node data method we have inside our node of type, it was just like the int node, but simply instead of returning an int, it returns a type. And then we return value. Again, that value parameter right here, as you can see, all the way stepping through, just like our standard approach of a typed 
method, we declare a value, we initialize it to a correct value, and then we return it. Look into our set it index method. It's of type void, of course, because it's simply going to be setting the value. As you can see right here, it takes an index as a parameter as well as a type value parameter. We again, we have to stand that standard assert, making sure the index is greater than or equal to zero and the index is less than size, making sure it'll actually fit within the structure. We then create another reference to our front pointer, calling this one again current. We iterate using that same approach, starting off at zero, going less than index, and using the current equals current get node pointer. So we just traverse that structure. And finally, when we reach that correct approach, we say current set node data, passing it value. We've already defaulted and initialized that, we're ready to go. Finally, we have our um, method of get size, the amazing method that it is, it simply returns the size, and that's good to go. As you can see, this looks a lot like what we did with inside our um, int node array, where this one is simply just set up so we can use the ability of that template class type, so we can make this so it work for any kind of data structure. We can use this to store any type of thing. And if we take a look again back in our actual structure, we have now an array of type int called number array. We added that to our data member section, and we have our test template array method inside there. Let's go look at the controller for that. Inside our test array template, we have our array template. We um, initialize that number array right there as an int of size one. It's simply just one single thing. We make sure that it will actually start timer. We can create and use the idea of that int test. See how long it actually takes to create a default int array and compare that to what it takes to actually make a number array using our, our templated type. And we can see and compare that information right here. So we have that lovely information. It's got the unused variable test where we, have, we haven't used anything with it. We're just using it to actually test that out. And so let's go ahead and take a look and see how that works. Making sure inside my start method, I actually call the templated array and I do. So we're gonna go ahead and play that up and command run. We're going to test the array template. We're in our array template now. Execution time is one millis uh, microsecond. Human time is one times e to the negative sixth power seconds. And the same thing we have right there, of making that simply of nine. So it doesn't take very much to make nine simple things. When we're looking at these small numbers, we're not going to see a big difference between what we're doing right here and that. But what we, when we do a larger project, if I were to create another object right there and put it inside that, we can actually see what kind of impact that would have. And we'll take a look at that as we go further throughout the course. Again, this is the idea of creating the basics of an array template class. We're going to be um, adding some more information to this next time. Specifically, we're going to look at what it takes to follow the rule of three. We're going to create the idea of a copy constructor as well as a destructor and adding that here into our data our class header section and implementing them inside that. Continue on and hope you have a great day. Thanks.